sentence of uh, the phenomenology of spirit. So, um, yeah, so um, the question is, uh, how did history end and what does it mean? I'm gonna do this pretty briefly. It involves summarizing the whole history of philosophy up to uh, Kant, Fichte, Shelley, and Hegel, which I'll just do in five minutes, which is not, you know, uh, it's just a summary, okay? So, um, history began with the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, um, uh, particularly with Thales, 600 BC, uh, with the search of the arche, A-R-C-H-E, that's the key word, uh, which means uh, the principle and living ground of everything. That's what philosophers have been looking for. They at least said all things are water. Everything reduces to one thing, water, etc., etc. Plato is the good. Aristotle's prime principle is the unknown rule, etc., etc. So as Shelley brilliantly says in um, one of his early essays, he was 19, I believe, of the I, Ish, as principle of philosophy, you could, uh, the great the turning point in the history of philosophy was the move from an objective arche to a subjective arche. An objective arche, or first principle, is one that exists outside uh, the self or subject, such as the good, the transcendent God, religion, etc., etc. A subjective arche, the turn to the subject, beginning with Descartes, uh, subject arche is something which is within the subject. Uh, namely consciousness or thought, okay? So, uh, this turnaround began with uh, Descartes and was completed by his disciple. Uh, Descartes, of course, only reached, as Shelley and Hegel say, a finite, uh, or, okay, finite consciousness, as it's called, or a finite I, because he posited beings outside the circle of the cogito, the transcendent God, and the atomic, uh, invisible world of of Adam's uh, on the other side of experience. So as time went on, uh, Kant got rid of it, and Fichte showed in Hegel. So consciousness became <coughs> infinite, that's the point. And uh, let's see, well, the, the, the key is the, uh, the discovery of the absolute I, that's what I express in my books. <coughs> and it first began, this absolute I, uh, began with Kant's critique of pure reason, uh, 1781. Um, in the second section, the transcendental deduction of the categories, where Kant discovers or states the highest unconditioned principle of knowledge, which is uh, the transcendental unity of our perception, that is, transcendental unity, keyword, of self consciousness. Okay. Um, barbaric expression going to Fichte. Uh, Fichte pulled it out of the critique and renamed it the absolute ish, the absolute I, um, which is all that ever was, is, and will be, okay? Okay, and then of course, uh, Schelling added the philosophy of nature to the transcendental philosophy, and Hegel um, came along and added an introduction to science, uh, so, uh, Fichte and Shelley did not ground or demonstrate or prove this first principle, uh, which is all reality, and he added a science of logic, and uh, as, they, as he proclaims that end of the history of philosophy, we now have science. In other words, philosophy transformed into science through Kant, Fichte, Shelley, and Hegel. And history came to an end. I have the quotes for you. Uh, Hegel. Um, just for those of you who don't know that Hegel said this, uh, Europe is absolutely the end of history, and in the phenomenology, history's goal is absolute knowledge. Uh, uh, the claim is that it was attained in this last chapter of the phenomenology. Okay, um, yeah, so that's it. History is over because we now, the human race has in its possession absolute knowledge and absolute science which in modern language is nothing but the universe's knowledge of itself, which you, you know, came out, it's coming out in the guy hypothesis, and the anthropic principle, Gilo de Chardin, all these, all these sciences are crashing on this quantum physics is getting it. There's only one consciousness, consciousness of reality, et cetera. Okay, um, 
Yeah, so I don't know how you guys react to the end of history. I pretty much know a lot of you don't believe it, but that's okay. We'll discuss that if you like. And um, now we go on to number two, the second part of my talk, which is that, um, more interesting perhaps, uh, with uh, Hegel's achievement, if you will, of absolute knowledge, what is coming on the scene is a new God, if you will, a new concept of God, and a new religion. A new religion. Well, there's two ways to put it. You could also say, depends on if you're an atheist or a theist, uh, you could also say your religion is uh, disappearing, is being replaced by uh, recognition. That's the million dollar word. Intersubjective recognition. So that's what I want to focus on, and we can discuss it. Um, let's see. Well, if you haven't heard of him, uh, you should uh, look at uh, John Stewart's work, J-O-N Stewart. He finally, after 200 years, uh, decoded the phenomenology, uh, which is a major achievement. Uh, I, I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, Hegel left us with this code, uh, A, B, C, that's the whole book, and C splits into a, A, B, B, C, C, and D, D. I don't know if you're familiar with the phenomenology. Has anybody ever looked at the phenomenology here? Three people? Uh, briefly, uh, A is the beginning. Consciousness, okay, which is bad. Consciousness of an object. And we start out with the most fundamental, rudimentary form of uh, knowledge or consciousness, which is immediate knowledge, knowledge of the immediate, the this different from any other this, etc. So from A, uh, we go through various uh, shapes of consciousness, and we move on to B, we advance to B, which is self-consciousness, okay? Consciousness of self. Self is reality, that's the conclusion, or consciousness is reality, not forces, things, laws, uh, behind, underneath the experiential world. Consciousness is reality, okay. And then finally, uh, we go, we wind up with C, after many, uh, oh, we have, what is it, the desire, and then independence, the dependence of uh, self-consciousness, or the freedom of self-consciousness, stoicism, skepticism, of the consciousness, and that takes us in, out of the Middle Ages, uh, the Greek world, Roman world, into the modern period. And this is where philosophy came to an end, and history came to an end, according to Hegel, right? Uh, yeah, so here's the key, um, according to, and I think he's right, I've studied the whole thing, I've compared the text with what it says, and he's right. Um, yeah, so C, as you might expect, knowing about Hegel, is the unity of the first two. The unity, C represents the unity of consciousness and self-consciousness. And what that means is that consciousness is of an object. But self-consciousness is of the self. So when you bring them together, object and self are one. So whenever I'm looking at an object, I see myself in the object. Okay, so uh, he expresses that at the beginning of a reason as, reason is a certainty of consciousness that it is all reality. Okay, so there it is. Consciousness is all reality. And that's what reason is. And that just gets worked out in the next four sections. Okay, so here we go. It's nothing but C. C A A is reason, theoretical, practical. C B B is spirit. That's concrete, actual, historical spirits. And he traces the process in B B of the um, of the, if you will, the becoming of the kingdom of God. Okay, let me hold this for a second. BB. This is very important, though. Only a few scholars know about this. Uh, Reich Gottes. Reich Gottes is uh, what Schelling and Hegel uh, devoted their lives to accomplishing. That is, bringing, bringing the kingdom of God into the here and now into human history. And Hegel's claim is that at the end of the phenomenology, that's what happened. Of course, the problem is that the world doesn't know it, so we're in a mess. So we have to educate, as Plato said, the race into this awareness. And then, then we have heaven, heaven on earth, you know, the age of the gods, which we'll get into in a minute. So, uh, right, so right God, goddess is achieved 
in uh, ABC, the third part of uh, BB, spirit, okay? I don't want to go into too much detail. A, uh, a again, it's the same thing. A uh, parallels consciousness within spirit. Uh, B parallels uh, self-consciousness and C reason. Uh, in a nutshell, you know, I'm teaching the phenomenology right now at St. John's. We're going through it line by line, so it's right in front of me. So, but you know, I'm going to simplify this. Okay, so uh, here we go. Well, I don't think the main point is this. Okay. The Greeks were incredible. They had the whole thing. Everybody loved everybody. There was a unity. The citizen was one. The individual was one with the with the polis, uh, with the community. And uh, there, was, there was no conflict or opposition. There was no alienation at this point. Everyone was at home in this present world. And, and all, all of Hegel and his generation never wanted to go back to Greece. And Hegel said, no, yes, they have something, but they're missing something. They're missing what modern individualism contributes to the whole. So, so, so we have to, in effect, uh, bring together what the Greeks had, the universal, if you will, and the individual, what the modern uh, uh, society achieved. Okay? So it's the unity of the universal and the, and the individual, which marks the end of history, and uh, kingdom come. Okay? Whatever that is. Um, okay, this is, okay, and then of course, this is, this is my excitement, uh, uh, which I want you to, you know, think, consider, because uh, I just discovered this recently. Well, I've been writing around this for 25 years, but, um, well, here's the key. The key is that um, at the end of C, the last section of spirit, historical spirit, right, the becoming of absolute spirit, Hegel says, with the um, mutual recognition of acting and judging conscience, right? When they say, yes, I forgive you, you forgive me, what we have is God. That's G-O-D, appearing in the midst of those who know themselves as pure knowing. Okay, there's God. And then we go on to religion, you know, natural religion, Greek religion, Christianity. But it's, it's amazing. He says something right in the first two pages of religion that what has to take what the truth is, he says, that the spirit of the actual world, that is, which contained, uh, you know, what, what was reached at the end of um, uh, moral consciousness and uh, goodness and conscience and uh, the forgiveness of sins, okay, which contains the whole, you know, horizontal world, the here and now. Consciousness, self-consciousness, reason, and then the three historical spirits, okay? And the spirit of religion, which we're about to get into right now, are one and the same, or the same, or identical. That means there's no advance, okay? So the end of the book is right there with the two people forgiving each other. I see you a completely, I see myself completely in you, my absolute opposite, and you see yourself in me, okay? Um, this is what spirit is. Okay, that's the key to the whole thing. What does this mean? Hegel is not a monist. You need an other person to realize spirit. It's so important because people, you can go off the deep end and say, I'm God. You know, the new way is full of this stuff. I am God. That's not true. Because when you realize what Hegel's saying, you ha it, 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 it involves a total denial of your ego with separate personality. You see, which you don't get in the I am God business. No, you have to, it's like, um, it's a kenosis. Kenosis is the word, you empty yourself. He does that in the beginning of religion. You know, the father empties himself in the son, the son, the son empties himself uh, into the father. So there's this kind of reciprocal emptying of one another into each other. So you sort of dissolve your separate egoic self. So it's totally humble, and what results is this incredible experience of love. Uh, what's the word in German? Uh, look, sell it kind of something. I quoted the most one of the most powerful things he says in the science of logic, speaking of the begriff. Uh, that's this million dollar word, the concept. Okay? And uh, what is it? Page 848 of the science of logic, he says, the begriff, the begriff is alles. You with me? The concept is empty. There is nothing but this word. Bailey's all things are water. Well, so say, hey, all things are the concept whatever this thing is. But of course, the concept has two sides, concept and reality. So when I look at you, you are the reality side of the concept. If 
but we're one. But when you look at me, you're the concept and I'm the reality. Something like that. That's what he says when you look closely into the pages of the, uh, you know, the forgiveness of, of evil at the end. Yeah, beautiful soul. Forgiveness of evil. So, um, yeah, okay, I wanted to say that. Okay, so religion is not an advance. You say, oh, wow, now we're getting something new with religion. But he says, no, the spirit in the world that we just left is identical to the spirit in religion. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's the crucial thing. Oh, I, I got to say at this point. So what this means, really, this is so incredible. We've just transcended religion. <laughs> in other words, um, in this uh, uh, mutual uh, intersubjective recognition of, of two people, right, all the content and teaching and principles and dogmas and eff efficacy behind all the religions of the world are contained. It's mind-blowing once you see what he's saying. So we don't need religion and all the imagery, the doctrines, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, heaven, hell, you know, all this stuff. Um, oh, I gotta bring this in before I forget. <laughs> This is getting quantum physics out of this, and all the people are coming into this. There's no such thing as time. Uh, Parmenides was the first to get this. Parmenides, we can do that if you want. But uh, this is, I love this most, the thing that Hegel said, which Professor knows, is that eternity hmm, will not be, nor has it been. It is. Got it? <laughs> so there's nothing but the now will be present, as Schrodinger says in My View of the World and all these other things. You know, so I can echo Tolley's how, you know, how to do these things. Just like the power of now and everything. Okay, so we got that. Um, right, so what was I? Okay, religion, right. So you know, all the religions in the world are contained in, you know, uh, it's not a stay, it's not completely about I. The divinity within me honors, salutes, and respects, and loves the divinity in you. Uh, Hegel does it in the self-consciousness chapter. The spirit is an I that is we, and a we that is I. I love the way he puts that, you know? Intersubjective, so that's the end of history. Well, someone said, I can never find it in Hegel, back in the 60s, I was taking a course with uh, a German or Jung or somebody. A tale, it was an old tale. The end of, someone said, Hegel's vision of the end of history is the recognition of each by all. I don't know if you've heard that. But the key word is recognition, okay? So once, you know, the whole world recognizes everybody, uh, I see myself in you completely, and you see yourself in me, that's it. I mean, that's the kingdom of God, that's right, Gautus. Fully actualized in the year now. Uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. So if you have anything to comment on, I, I put all these quotes there, and uh, you know you can reference a quote, and I'll explain it, or you can attack me any way you want. You know, I'll do the best I can to defend because I've been preaching, teaching this for like forty over forty years. I've been studying the idealists since 1968. So, uh, question. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all that one. Wait a minute, though we had to place it. Oh yeah, wait. Okay, like you're being generous. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that there's something that we can do does the uh, understanding the end of history and uh, for you and John uh, John, sorry? Um, you said John or something? No, no, no. Um, uh, Hinge how, on. how much does uh, understanding the end of history uh, for you um, mean in, in embodying recognition is done through the spread of liberal institutions? Um, so this is kind of like the Fukuyama, I guess, interpretation. Uh, I don't think much of Fukuyama, but okay. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't even bother with that question, actually. I mean, uh, it makes no difference. I mean, it depends. If you're teaching this idea of the unity of offices or identity and difference, that's good. But whatever you, these liberal institutions are teaching, it may get you uh, more money, a better, you know, less taxes. But this is meaningless. You know, even if Bernie wins, nothing's going to happen. Essentially, metaphysically, you have to you have to change it as much. The German used to say, "There's a revolution of consciousness going around in the '60s. We got to change our consciousness." Right. So, insofar as the liberal movement is changing consciousness, you know, has read uh, the history of philosophy and Kant, Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel, right on. But it, I don't know if that helps at all. 
Okay, so you, you wouldn't say that, that it's not, that's not the, uh, the emphasis shouldn't be on, on that and interpreting what Hegel has in mind? Well, or, liberalism you can interpret as uh, uh, stressing the individual as opposed to the universal, is that what you mean? Uh, as I said, you need both. Yeah, well, I've heard, that, well, the idea that recognition is that some, I mean, it's not something that uh, every individual particular human being uh, uh, obviously achieves at the end of history because that obviously hasn't happened, right? So he, it, so the, the reason the emphasis is on well, the education, the institutions is because, because, uh, a, a, a liberal institution is, a, is an institution such that um, that recognition can be embodied. Um, right, very uh, good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. I so, agree, 100 percent. We need more liberal institutions. Colleges, yeah. of course, that are teaching uh, Hegel, absolute knowledge, absolute science, recognition. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm for that. Yeah, I think that's very important. How else is it going to get into the world? You know? Right. If the conservative institutions don't want to hold on to what has been the status quo, we're going to be stuck for one of those many thousands of years, right? So I, I'm with you there. And I guess it, you didn't, it wouldn't matter that, uh, since you're s interpreting this as in a, in a very metaphysical way, that, I mean, one, one might think, worry that the future climate change problem is um, certainly going to stretch the uh, the prevalence of, of liberal institutions at some point, right? Like so, um, it well, seems yeah. like all all, all so, you know potential solutions really that um, to you know to address climate change are going to involve at least some kind of restriction of individual liberty, right? Um, well, again, that's all external. Uh, I'm concerned with with consciousness, which you know. Well, I, but you can open it up and go for hours with that, restrict liberties. I think we understand what, what I'm saying. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think there's a problem with that, but climate change is important. Any other thing, anything else? You got a question? Yes. Um, we have to. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've read the phenomenology. Oh. So it's not as, as fresh in my mind. But I, I, so your argument is that you want to diminish the distinction. Between, so again, what? So you want to diminish the distinction between moral consciousness and religious consciousness, is that correct? You can say that, yes, but in moral that, consciousness for Hegel is not over here, it's over here. It's the same thing as religion. But right. you gotta, it's not just Kantian moral philosophy. He deals with that, and it right. transcends it. Tichtian, uh, you know, my conviction is right. I know immediately what's right. But then the other judges me, and then we forgive each other at the end. Right. So, and yeah. I think you even said that the moral, the world of the moral consciousness, is the same as the world of right. Religious consciousness. The world of moral consciousness which <coughs> contains all that preceded right. self consciousness. Uh, my yeah. my yeah. question is: Do you feel the same way about self consciousness? Is it the same self consciousness that? Um, is prevalent in both moral consciousness and religious consciousness. My question kind of hinges on. on yeah, that. is self consciousness uh, the same in moral consciousness than in religious consciousness? That's a that's that's a, that's a big question. You know, what do you mean by self consciousness? The important thing is is when you unite self consciousness and consciousness. So the object is necessary. The other is absolutely necessary for true self consciousness. But I think the move between uh, moral consciousness and religious religious consciousness, it seems to me the movement between the move the move between right uh, one to the other right. I would characterize the uh, subconsciousness in um, morality as intersubjective, but at, in religion it's the community of the we. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a we for Hegel. When you have two people, you have then, we. Right, mm -hmm. because this like between pre pre. pre Presupposing mm -hmm. the judge judgment between the judge and the actor yeah. is language, right? And language presupposes that there's a pre-existing community. Okay, and, and he seems, loves language. He says right. that's essential. And it but, seems to me that mm -hmm. that pre presupposed community is then becomes self consciousness in, in, in religion. The community becomes self consciousness. Right. Right. And to me, it's, uh, it seems to me that it's the village, religious community 
that is that embodies God on earth. Yeah, that's what Hegel says. The church is God, the actual present God. <clears throat> and so, yeah, Hegel say the community, the world community, uh, the sum of all communities mm -hmm. is the you know, there's a higher voice in great communities. Aren't there? You know, it's, it, that's it. Uh, well, he's, he's not saying no. He's saying yes. That's what we need. Oh, uh, I had something. Yeah. Um, in religion, you know, the chapter reveals revealed religion. It's like he refers back to morality. There's Jesus Christ, known to be God. So you take the concept that we got at the end of morality, mm -hmm. and you apply it. Oh, I see myself right. in Jesus Christ, in God. Then I, I am the same Spirit. I am the Spirit. You know, the, I, you know I'm identical with Jesus Christ. That's right. that's and important. And it's like the community recognizing itself versus that intersubjective, like sort of. Individual. Exactly, community. and you should also look at Schelling. There's a brilliant job. Of course, you know the the philosophy of, of the Revelation. You have the Church of Peter. You know, on this raw Catholic Church, it gets the Revelation gets exhausted. Then you have beneath the next tower the Church of uh, Paul. That's the Protestants. Then finally, you have the Church of John, and that's what takes place. It's when science and religion become one. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need in the world. These two have to become one and work together. I, I reveal all this in my book. Which I was going to mention in a minute, but are we finished? Uh, yeah, this this would be a good place to stop. It's uh, three ten. Uh, okay, all right. I just want to say that uh, for, in one second, one minute, that uh, the second page is uh, Hegel on immortality. Because the major Hegelians say Hegel is an atheist. When you're dead, you're dead. And Hegel says the exact opposite. These guys never read the complete corpus. So there are like 15 places where Hegel says man is immortal. So that has to be corrected. It's a total misreading. And secondly, I'm giving a, uh, a class at the 90 Second Street Y, June 8th, who will is welcome to come. And I'm also teaching in phenomenology in the fall at St. John's. You're welcome to sit in for free. And the science of logic in the spring, all for free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Great.